Yeah, it's the text, the text, right? The text. Um, yeah. Yeah, because you've got, like, if you've got text, if you get so much taken off, but if you've got. Mm -hmm. Doesn't need any other. Okay, it is six o'clock. So welcome. Um, we we are live streaming this um, meeting tonight. So we ask if you have something to say, please step up to the podium. And uh, with that, we'll call the meeting to order. And hopefully you've all signed in. And we'll rise for the pledge. <laughs> of the United States of America, and to the Republic of which we stand, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody. Just uh, so everybody is clear that this is not the meeting that you come to and present your case about the valuation on your property. This is the meeting where we go through our budget and then you can comment on things that you like or dislike with the budget. Uh, but uh, that's what this one's for. The, the one that you can test your valuation, that meeting is in the spring and when you get your notice in the spring for those. So welcome to the truth and taxation meeting. And we will start out with a <coughs> presentation of the 2024 county budget by county administrator, David Minky. Uh, Mr. Chair, thank you very much. Uh, and thank you everyone for coming tonight. Um, we'll just, the order for tonight is up on the screen. It, it's basically the same as you uh, picked up if you grab the agenda. And wanted to start with an overview of how did we get to tonight? So we started the formal budget process back in August. On August 15th, we had a budget meeting. Uh, and then on August 22nd and 29th is when most of the department budget presentations and requests were made uh, to the county commissioners. And then in September, uh, we had continued discussion at the regular board meeting. And then September 19th is when the county board approved the preliminary levy. And that levy uh, was used to calculate your taxes as shown on your statement that uh, you received in the mail that brought you to this uh, tonight's meeting. Then in November, we had a continued discussion at a county board meeting. And that brings us to tonight, December 7th, where we have our truth and taxation meeting. And then after tonight, the last formal step uh, will be December 19th, which is a regular county board meeting where the county board will adopt the final uh, property tax levy and final budget for 2022. <laughs> so jumping right into the property tax levy, uh, this chart, if you start at the bottom, uh, you get the total levy. So the proposed levy for 2024 is $22,123,145, which is 850, nearly $851,000 more than 2023 and comes out to a 4% increase on the levy. And then looking, uh, going, jumping back up to the top of the chart, you see the top three lines, the general fund, health and human services and road and bridge. Those are the funds that expend most of the county money. Uh, and so you can see the levy for those funds, uh, the general fund uh, increasing $643,000 or 5%. Uh, human services is not increasing the levy at all this year. And so that's what that zero is there for. Uh, the road and bridge fund, the levy is increasing a hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars, and all of that is dedicated to vehicle and equipment purchases. Uh, building fund has no increase, and then you see there's the jail bond, courthouse bond, and CIP bonds. Uh, the jail and the courthouse bonds are pretty self-explanatory. Those are the payments for the building that we're in uh, tonight, and then the CIP bond is for the North Pine Government Center in Sandstone, and you can see those vary a little bit from year to year, either up or down, and those are set by the bond documents when the debt is issued uh, on those projects. 
And then we have a technical equipment fund, and that is proposed to increase uh, the levy $50,000. <laughs> and then uh, the elections fund, uh, the levy proposed levy for that is $45,000 or a 3% or excuse me, a $3,000 increase. And so you can kind of see that how that $22 million number breaks down and all the different uh, funds of the county. This chart looks at the expenditures. So the levy is just a part for the for most of these funds, the levy is just a part of the funding. Uh, and so again, general health and human services and highway, you can see those are where most of the money is spent. And then that right hand column is the change. And from 2023 to 2024, for the general fund, it's almost a $2 million increase uh, for health and human services, just under a million. The highway fund is going down about one point, uh, just under 1.3 million. And that is based on fewer uh, projects. And most of the expenses from highway are paid for by uh, state and federal uh, highway dollars. And so as those projects come and go, that can move up and down uh, without much impact on the levy. Uh, and then we have an opioid settlement fund. You may have heard in the news about those nationwide opioid settlements. Uh, Pine County gets a slice of that. And then the COVID-19 relief fund, uh, that accounts for uh, what are known as the CARES Act or the American Rescue Plan Act. Uh, those were federal dollars that were passed through to the county. Uh, then we have the building fund. And if you remember from the last slide, that number was $25,000 of levy. There's $10,000 a year that the city of Sandstone makes as a payment from the sale of the John Wright building. And so that uh, has, I think, eight-ish years left on that payment schedule. Uh, and then you see the bond funds again and the technology equipment uh, elections again. And you see the expenditures in the election are much more than the levy was uh, because there's some spending of reserves there. And there's also some uh, reimbursements that are made by the cities and the townships for the work that the county does uh, related to the elections. And so if you get to the bottom of that 2024 column, you see that the total proposed budget for Pine County is $55,887,708. This just takes that information and puts it into a graph. Uh, and so you can see, you know, highway largest followed by human services, uh, public safety at 27%, and then general government at 14%. And on this slide, general government is pretty much everything that isn't health and human services, highway or public safety. So uh, assessor, auditor, administration, all of those uh, types of expenses. Same numbers, but just sliced differently. So you can see that salaries is the single largest expense. Uh, and if you put salaries and benefits together, which is the cost of labor, uh, it comes out just over 50%. I think it's 51% of expenditures. Uh, and then services and charges, uh, which are contracts for services, could be road projects, things like that. Uh, and so those are the major expense categories. And so if you think of that $55 million budget, 80% of everything that the county spends is on this, uh, this slide. So salaries and benefits are significant road and bridge construction, debt, out-of-home placement, uh, vehicle and equipment purchases, medical services to prisoners, and the library appropriation. So those handful of lines make up 80% uh, of all of the spending. This chart looks at revenue and expenditures to answer the question, is the fund balanced? And so starting up at the top, you see the general fund, it shows a net positive of $96,000. Uh, that was talked about at the two board meetings ago uh, by the county commissioners as designating that as a contingency, uh, which is something we have not done for a number of years. And I'll, I'll have a slide in the uh, later on that will show the fund balance and how that has been decreasing a little bit in recent years. Uh, Health and Human Services, it has a negative uh, 
um, budget, there is planned spending of reserves uh, in that budget. And so it balances with the use of current year revenues and planned use of reserves. Uh, highway is perfectly balanced on uh, the opioid settlement fund. Um, it, we just aren't, we don't show those revenues. And so that's spending a fund balance. Um, looking, so the bonds are in there, which you've seen those numbers already. And again, the same, the total down at the bottom, uh, $55.9 million. And then when you do all the arithmetic, you get a negative uh, 93,000, but that uh, again is spending, planned spending of reserves. This shows all of those funds and how much of that expenditure is funded by the levy, by the property tax levy. And so in the general fund of all the spending, 57% of it is uh, property tax levy and the balance is other revenues. And I've got a slide that will show those in more detail later on. Health and human services, about a third of it is levy. Uh, highway or road and bridge, only 14% is levy because most of that is uh, state and federal aid funds. Um, then there's no levy until you get down to the building fund and the, the 30, 29% is that sandstone payment. Uh, the bonds are 100% paid by the levy and bonds are required to levy a little bit more than the actual payment. Uh, and so that's why you see those numbers at 105 or 106 percent. Uh, the technology fund is 100 percent levy. And then elections is just about a quarter uh, levy for this upcoming year. So of in the general fund of the non property tax levy money, most of it is county program aid. That's that two point nearly two point four million dollars. Police aid is another 1.1 million. Payment in lieu of taxes is just under a million. And then the county contracts with some of the local jurisdictions for police patrol. And so those total uh, $771,000 of revenue. Uh, probation aid, interest earnings. Uh, we get an annual E911 grant. And if you get your telephone bill, you'll see that little E911 charge. This is that part of that comes to Pine County. Uh, solid waste assessment. This is the special assessment on each improved parcel. Uh, and then there's uh, taxes and uh, tax penalties and interests and the assessor contracts. And the assessor contract number has been decreasing if you followed that uh, year after year because we're reducing the cost to the townships of what the county charges for those assessing services. So here's a snapshot of the general fund, and it's just shy of $2 million increase, uh, or about 9.2%, and contained in that $1.9 million, um, and this is across the board for health and human services and highway as well with the wages and benefits. Uh, there's an about 6% general wage increase in the budget, uh, and then about a 9% insurance increase in the budget. And so that's driving a lot of it. And then also in the general fund, we have some increased public safety spending. Uh, there's a new assistant county attorney and a new probation agent. And then we have uh, $50,000 to replace handguns for the deputies, uh, $50,000 for less than lethal force uh, weapons, uh, $50,000 of target range improvements, and $35,000 for uh, to replace an ATV. And then you see that contingency of $96,000 shows up here as well. Um, and so there is no planned use of reserves uh, this year. And the uh, levy portion is $13.1 million. And then looking a little deeper into the general fund, these are the general fund departments that have the most spending or are the most expensive. So the county sheriff, that's the patrol side of things, uh, nearly $5.9 million. The jail, nearly 5 million. County attorney, uh, nearly 1.6 million. Probation, 1.3 million. And then uh, information technology at a million dollars. 
And so there'll be, um, remember that graph earlier where public safety was a big slice of the pie, those top four departments really drive uh, how, that, how that impacts the levy. Um, I won't read all of those uh, to you, but I can leave it up there for a, a moment to, to see. And then this next slide, these are just some workload measures uh, in the auditor, treasurer, and zoning uh, office uh, in some historical data on some of the typical work that's done and the volume of that work. And then we did the same uh, for a few of the departments, the assessor recorder's office. And JL operations, I'll call out uh, kind of in the middle of the slide, you see that cost per inmate per day. And that has been rising over time. I remember when that was like $100 a day. Uh, part of it is fewer inmates. Uh, and part of it is the cost of running jails has uh, increased significantly in the last several years. Um, but you can see during in 2021, our population was very low. And so that cost per inmate per day uh, spiked a little bit. Uh, now, health and human services, so total expenditures, just over $12 million. It's uh, just under a million dollar increase. And the levy portion actually goes down from 2023 to 2024, from 34% to 32%, uh, primarily driven by uh, intentional spending of reserves. And then, again, just some workload data in uh, health and human services. Child welfare. And then highway. So total expenditures are actually going down just under $1.3 million. Uh, we have about $1.5 million of local sales tax collections in the budget. Those funds are used exclusively on county roads that are not state aid roads. And so there's no uh, external source of funding for those roads. Uh, and so the sales tax is dedicated exclusively uh, to repair and maintain those roads. And then the levy portion is actually going up a little bit uh, from a year ago, primarily due to fewer projects and less uh, state and federal highway funds. Just a recap of the debt. So we have four outstanding bonds. Uh, the courthouse and jail will be paid off in 2031. And the North Pine Government Center will be paid off in 2023, or excuse me, 2033. Uh, and total outstanding at the end of this year is just under $18 million. In the general, or we have, this is just a slide on fund balances. This is kind of the question, how much money is in the bank? So in the general fund, there's just over $6 million with 4.6 of it assigned, um, unassigned, meaning it can be used for any legal purpose. And the county board policy says that there'll be a fund reserve of between 20 to 35%. At the end of 2022, we were at 22%. Uh, if we were at 35%, that would be uh, seven point, almost $7.3 million. So just to give some perspective there, uh, Health and Human Services has a fund balance of three and a half million on uh, assigned. And then Highway is showing a negative fund balance uh, that's due to the timing of uh, county state aid payments. And so it's not a cash flow concern. It's, it's an accounting uh, thing that just makes us look bad, but it's really not bad. Uh, and then land management has just over $2 million in fund balance. So the property tax calculation is um, takes your property value 
and your class rate. And so if you're a single family home, your class rate is probably 1%. There's over 50 different class rates, uh, but most folks in here uh, are homeowners, I presume. And so 1% uh, is the most likely class rate for your property. And so you take your value times your class rate and you get your tax capacity. So in the example, if it were a $200,000 value times the 1%, you get $2,000 of tax capacity. When you add up the tax capacity of all the property in Pine County, uh, you get to that $50 million number that's right in the middle of the slide. And then you divide the tax levy into that to create this tax capacity rate. And then that rate times your individual tax capacity, or in our example, that $200,000 home, um, that 43.8% 4 times the 2000 gets the $876 of taxes payable. And that's just the county portion. Uh, so it doesn't include city, school, special districts, et cetera. But that's just the, the simple arithmetic of how uh, you translate a property value to an actual how much do does a person owe. And then this chart, it's pretty busy. So... I'm gonna maybe just focus on kind of in the middle of the chart, you see that rural land and 39% change on the value. The left side is the value, the right side is tax capacity, and it has a 38% increase in tax capacity. So to the extent that your type of property is increasing at a rate greater than other types of property, taxes are gonna shift. And so if you look at that, big colored sheet that was uh, on the table and you see uh, from a zero levy up to I think it's a maybe a six percent levy what happens to each individual property uh, it varies where some of them despite a zero levy might still go up or despite a, a four percent levy uh, will still go down and that's just the impact of the shift in tax capacity um, based on how all of the property values have changed or the as a percentage of the total. So that concludes the formal presentation. And now it's open for uh, Mr. Chair for you to take comment. Okay. Everybody follow all that? We, if, if people wish to make comments on our, how we got to this point, how we got to the point where we're gonna levy $22 million roughly, um, which which in simple math is a 4% is a levy increase. So I'm guessing there aren't more than two people in this room who end up with a 4% increase. That's the average. Um, some people are lower, some people are higher, but that's the average of, of all the tax capacity in the county. That's the average um, increase. Mark, you got anything to enlighten us with? You usually do. <laughs> Yeah, please. Since since you called on, I was just going to sit and be quiet, but <laughs> since you called on me, um, I did have one of my questions answered earlier, so thank you for that. Um, so as far as the process, uh, in September, you adopted the preliminary budget and the levy. Yep. And so now you'll be voting on, so it's, I guess my question is the numbers that you showed us tonight, uh, Mr. Minkey, are those what was adopted in September? Yes. The, okay. the levy that was adopted in September that's on your uh, truth and taxation statement is the levy that I will bring to the December 19th meeting unless the county commissioners between now and then give a different direction. Okay. Uh, well, I won't say too much because, you know, my, my main concern is the meeting last night when the city of Pine City had their <laughs> truth and taxation hearing. So we're, uh, those of us who live in the city are getting sucked pretty hard. Um, so, so thanks for having a little more discipline here. I appreciate that. 
Um, but as you move forward, you know, if there are areas where you can continue to keep the downward pressure on the budget and the uh, uh, levy, that would be much appreciated because uh, I think most of us in Pine City are seeing uh, on the city portion of our taxes, what, 25%, 30, 35% increases. Um, and not to mention, and, and in addition, those who, of us who are living on uh, the area where there's going to be street construction next year are going to get socked uh, thousands of dollars, in my case, 19000 <laughs> for a street assessment. Yes. And, and the school is going to be looking for a bond referendum next year. And we all want good schools, right? So, uh, so any way you can help to kind of keep the overall burden down, it would be much appreciated because I mean, the, the discussion about the school came up last night that, you know, if at some point people are going to say, I, I can't pay any more taxes and that's going to hurt the school referendum. So thank you all for what you do. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Yeah. Anybody else? Hi there, guys. My name is Henry Gregoire. I've been a lifetime uh, resident prior to Pine County of Chisago County, and I got my hands on some property up in uh, Del Grove Township, northwest of Grindstone Lake, a little bit. And in the last few years, as I had been abandoned for about fifty years, this property. So I've been making improvements, and I expected to see a hike in my taxes as the time went on. But as time went on, it seemed like every year my taxes went down a little bit which I was incredibly happy for, you know, tore down an old building. None of this is, it's all coming out of my personal pocket and I'm trying to do everything in my off season. And now we come to the, uh, this year. And I had my concerns last year when my property values, it's in two portions and they had doubled each portion. And when I called the assessor about it, they said, well, that's your problem because you live next to the lake we're taking the value of the lake properties and utilizing that against your swamp land your agriculture and your trees I'm like well I, I do have concerns about this and essentially i said well that's tough talk about it when you get your taxes we'll see if they go up or not I'm like, well, okay we'll wait so then just you know reiterating what the gentleman in front of me just said if you got we appreciate keeping it down it's been going down which was helping me a lot in the construction and the restoration of the property just getting to be able to get out and walk around my entire property has pretty much just come from the drop that I've had the last few years, just adding on to my budget. And now seeing that this is going to go up my two sections, one I'm looking at here is a 54.23% increase. And the other one's a 38.53% increase. Admittedly, they're smaller sections. So I imagine when you're just looking at the percentages like that, the smaller values are going to go up higher. But at the same time, the rural areas, along with the folks in, in the cities, are all going to get hit really hard with this. And we appreciate your guys' every effort to try and keep things as down as possible, You know, especially when, for us with the wetland areas, we don't get any incentive to keep them in wetland and we can't dry them out to put them into any kind of agriculture. So there's not a whole lot we can do with that other than let the ducks and the deer go swimming around. All right. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it and appreciate the work you do. If you could just... Thanks. Keep them a little bit on the lower side for us. And thank you. Please stop. Stop at the assessor's office. Okay. And and chat with them about the values. Just All make, right. Make sure we're tracking right. I do. They were very adamant that their computer system was a hundred percent accurate, and they had no desire to come out and look at my swamp. Well, they're they're right down here right now. So okay. Chat with them. I'll give them another chat. Okay. Thanks. Hi, my name is Dan Swanson. I live in Pine City. I have just some questions more about specific items in the budget. Would that be the time to ask now? Yep, this is this is what it's for. So, um, with the opioid settlement money, yep. uh, I'm I'm just curious: is there specific programming that is planned for this to go back into, or does this get absorbed by the general fund? No, it it uh, it actually is going to get it. It's pointed to public health. Okay. And public health has some programs that they are working on to use that. That's why the expenditure is what it is this year, because that's the programs they've come up with for this coming year. 
to expend some of that money. And that that money will continue to come for, is it 18 and a half years? Is we know how much we're gonna get. There's still a couple of companies that um, the federal government hasn't settled with yet. So we, we might see a little bit of an increase there, but um, we kind of know what we're gonna get every year. So you gotta stay within that budget. That, that's wonderful to hear. Yeah. Um, and then rumor around the campfire is, is that there are renovations potentially needed for this building that have been asked for at the state level um, as a wish list thing. And the question I have is if those um, wish lists uh, uh, funds don't come through, is there going to be an additional ask um, for a potential more money to fix the building or is do you want me to, Mr. Chair? Yeah. Yeah. So we have a bonding request in to make some renovations to the jail. And we need to increase the amount of segregation between different classifications of prisoners. And right now, because our population's low, it's not a significant problem. If we do not get state support to make the changes, there will be a plan B or a plan C. Okay. So there'll it'll be a it'll be a process before anything is done. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your time. Yep. Thanks. Very good questions. Thanks. Other questions. Hi, I'm Bill Walkie. Live in uh, Bremen Township. Okay, so my taxes went from 600 to 1200, and now this year they're proposing 1600. That's in the last three years. So that's a big jump in there. So just on the bottom of my statement for this year, it's a 25% increase. Um, Bremen Township is not overly populated, so I don't believe that this is very fair. And looking at somebody that's retiring up here, the only only thing that we have is Social Security. We don't have anything else. So by keeping on increasing it by big jumps and bounds like that, it's not fair to the smaller people that you know basically don't have much to go on. Period. So I would appreciate if you kind of work at keeping the taxes, especially in the outer rural areas, try to keep them down would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Can't say too much more than that. No, <laughs> thanks. Yeah, go, go, go ahead. <laughs> You're gonna be fine. <laughs> Somebody I know. <laughs> I'm, this is just going to be a mathematical yep. thought process here. Yep. Our estimated market value went up $72,000. I can guarantee we can't sell the home for what you think we can. When you say our taxes are staying at a 4% in increase, you had 72000 that 4% makes a big difference. And yes, we're both retired, my husband's disabled. Um, we really appreciate not being taxed out of our home that we worked for. But that, back to the math, when you say 4% and when you do this, you can almost double your 4% to 8%. So to say it's only 4% is unfair. When you keep jacking up the market value. I've This is my fourth home. Market value used to be less than what you could sell it for. Right now, it's more than I could sell it for. I'd never get this. But you're going to be taxing me next year on that. So it's not 4%. It's higher than that for us. Thank you. Thanks. Mm. 
uh, Scott Sandberg, I live in Brenham Township, and I know my property value, they said, went up 70000 and I'd like to know how. And that I'd take 70000 and walk away from it right now. And they've got it listed at just shy of 170000 You know, and it just, I have no idea how they come up with the figures. Did you go talk to them? Don't I already did, that? and they got to come back out and reassess it because she's got it listed as having a full basement, and it's a crawl space. And I told her that. You know, the house was built in the 50s. We moved it in there, and they've got it listed built in the 70s. You know. Did you move it in in about the 70s? No, I moved it in in 2020 because there was a mobile home there and I got rid of the mobile home and figured I'll get a, this is an old cabin that we moved in. You know, it was either put it in a dumpster or move it. So I moved it in and when I get time to work on it, I work on it. But it's to the point now, it's, well, it went up 70,000. I'd like to know where, you know, where it could get a check for it. I'd walk away. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jeff Peterson, and I own a seasonal property about that far from Carleton County, so I'm on the far, far end of Pine County. So we don't have any of the city. Um, trying to think of the right word, but don't have any of the city uh, Amenities. benefits or yeah. benefits. Yeah. Um, I am supporting Moose Lake schools and not Pine County schools because of where it's located, serviced by Moose County. And our property's gone up like almost $200,000 in two years. And the assessor came out to look at it, left a post-it on the front door. And I tried to call him to say, I think you ought to come and actually tour the house and never heard back from him. So I think Jason, I believe was his name. I've already talked to the, the group down there and it just, that's outrageous, you know, to have that kind of increase in a two year period is just, you know, hard to sustain that. So, and I know I couldn't sell it for what it's valued at because with interest rates and everything else, the way it is right now, it's out of control. So, I mean, I wish I could enjoy some of the benefits of the city, but, you know, we're on the very, very, I don't even know what police department to call. Now, do I call Moose Lake? Do I call a county sheriff? I don't know, you know, so, but thank you. Thank you. Two hundred. Hi, uh, James McGuinn. Uh, question for you: What you what are you getting four percent increase on the levy, property tax increase? Is that where you're getting that from, uh, Mr. Chair? Yeah. The increase in the levy is just a calculation of the total collected in 2023 versus the total proposed for 2024. That that difference is a four percent increase. How it impacts everyone's individual property tax is way different. And that's where this colored sheet, right? If you look at the at the green, which is the 4%, you can see how each individual property might go up or some of them even fall. So right. But I mean, I've got three properties, one increase of 38, one's 40, one's 50, and one's like 80%. You know, I got 180 at one eighty acre parcel and an 80% increase and another 80 that's a, I don't know, 40%. The taxes? Yeah. The Pine County? Hinkley. The, the Pine County? Yeah. The, the line the line for Pine County went up to 80%? Down at the bottom, I got one that's um, that's 80 acres that last year was 256. This year, or this year, I should say, and now you're going up to four hundred seventy-six dollars for next for twenty twenty-four. Yeah. So, could I see that? Yeah.
Can you talk to the assessors? I can go talk to them. No, I haven't yet. Oh, okay. I, I can go talk to them. I, uh, thank you. I'm just one more question. You know, I mean, yeah. I know everything's gone up in the last couple of years. You know, I mean, since COVID, I mean, we all know that it's hard to get anything you want. But on the other hand, I, you know, you got 30% up to 80%. I don't expect to get a raise to, to cover that kind of money, you know? I mean, you, a lot of places you're lucky you get a 3% raise. And when you order like this, I mean, where are you going to get that kind of money? I mean, I kind of live paycheck to paycheck to begin with. So, you know, doubling it, you know, it's kind of a hardship. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, the the assessor, if if you have questions, on, if your values really seem out of whack, um, please talk to the assessors and because uh, sometimes uh, things happen you know um, but uh, they try their darndest to be uh, spot on but um, sometimes it doesn't work uh, so we the whole thing is trying to treat everybody fairly um, you know so everybody it doesn't matter if you live in Royalton Township or New Dozy Township or Windermere Township, you, you should be treated the same. And uh, values don't track that way. That's part of the issue is they, you know, values go up down here or, or up there on ag land or on commercial property or on, on home property. So uh, it'd be a lot easier if, if, you could make the calculation and if we set a 4% levy increase that everybody went up 4%, but there's adjustments. Um, I believe Kelly told me there's actually 62 classes of property now. Um, uh, it's a very complicated system that Minnesota has. Uh, and they do that to try to help individuals that uh, need need a special compensation or whatever and so um that makes it that makes it difficult to do the calculation sometimes and and sometimes errors are made or anybody on the board got something they want to say your house or i would go check with them and, and make your appointment tonight while you're here <clears throat> i had Jason come out to the house and left a yellow post it because I, was, I wasn't there. Right, but you can go make your appointment tonight while you're here for him. They're going to gonna have Jason call me. So cause you can't just guess. Right. What you're looking at. No, they, they want to, they want to come and. And I would love to have them walk through the house. Yeah. You because. Know, can't testify that. So, but yes, I've already talked okay, about good. it. All right. But thank you very, very much. I want to thank you all for coming um, and thanks for everybody that spoke. We do, you know, it, it, it's, uh, it's not, it's not the funnest job in the world to, to bring raise people's taxes and, uh, it ain't fun to pay anybody. no, but, but here's the big, but if you, if we remember the budget, uh, Almost half of the almost half of the levy dollars go to public safety. That's the sheriff, the correction officers, the county attorney, uh, the probation people. That that's all of that people. So so that's that's your levy dollars. You know, half. You think of that if you're paying a thousand dollars, five hundred of that is going just for those departments. 
kind of talking about that and looking at the Moose Lake School District. I mean, they're sitting with a surplus from what I could tell from the, the financials that I sent it off to this stuff. And now they want to yeah. add to that surplus that they already have. And it's just like, I thought schools and hospitals and everybody's supposed to be nonprofit. Yeah, it, you know? let, me, let me tell you, we, we have in our budget, we have budgeted to add to our surplus. Uh, because I was on the board when our surplus was razor thin. And, and Kelly, how much do we have to have to pay every, every week? Well, every other, week. every other week, about 650,000 to make payroll and everything. So if you only got 800,000 in the bank and, and some payment doesn't come in. Um, now you have to go to the bank and borrow money to make payroll, and then you're in a bad spot. Then you're get, you get that's a downward spiral. So we we have on the recommendation of our our auditors and and just good financial soundness, we want to have enough of a cushion to make sure we can get through those uh, that we can cash flow. Uh, our our system it it used to be on highway projects that if we were going to do 13 miles of, of paving this year we'd get a check before the paving season started and then we could put that in a bank earn a little interest and then pay the contractors as jobs got done well now that that is in reverse now we write the checks out and then we submit it for reimbursement. So uh, that seems like a pretty small thing, but it turns out to be a huge thing. That's why when you look on that financial statement, even though we're not broke in the highway department, it shows that we had what about a half, half a million, million, half a million dollar deficit because of the way the payments line up. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, I'm going to ask again the yep. point that I brought up about who do I contact in the area that I live in? Um, sheriff or, or if prison. you're living, the sheriff back here. You, um, you live in Pine County, so you call the Pine County Sheriff. Okay. Yep. Okay. If, and I mean, like I said, I'm not far away from Carlton yeah, County. And if you live across the road from the Carlton County Dev, <laughs> he might show up first. You know, just because he's that far away. They do kind of spread that out, though, or depending on where the call goes, or how does that work? We we have three districts um, in in Pine County, so to to try to spread the deputies out. Okay. But you you know how long it took you to drive down here. If if, if uh, somebody's already on a call up in your district, and then you call, and a guy's got to get there from Hinkley or Pine City. Yeah. It you know how long it takes. Yep. Oh, I, I, I think they do an incredible job, um, you know. But it's a it's a huge geographic area to cover. Have to call once or twice, and yes, they have yeah. done a really really good job. Oh. You're right, Chuck. <laughs> I was just going to go back to when you were talking about reserves, where the state suggests us to be higher, like 50%. Yeah. We chose to go way less than that. And that's because of things that can blow up anywhere, you know, and problems and things like that. But the other thing I want to add is we are also facing in, in operating the county inflation costs are driving things crazy for us too. So that, that percentage of increase that, you guys kind of get a double whammy, right? I mean, we all do. That you pay taxes, they go up for us too, and then the taxes hit you again, so you, you get it again. But the bills have to get paid, and we still have to have some cushion for business. And we we debate it all the time because it's not fun. We don't want to be a bank of the people's money. Just want to get reelected. <laughs> no, it's, well, it's it's no. I get it. It's a hard, hard balance. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Right. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. No, we hear you. Yeah. 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 That's why when you look at these, those are that's our hoses, and we look at the impact of everything. Yeah. yeah. We bought about like four years ago. Well, we bought what they're saying now. Perfect. Yeah. 73%. We either bought really well <laughs> or somebody yeah, made a mistake. Regardless, yeah. we've cleaned out a lot of trees yeah. and they're taxing the piss. I'll tell you what. Okay, okay. we assess trees. I can tell you that we can sit around and talk, but the meeting here, I think we're winding down at the meeting. Um, we appreciate, we really appreciate you coming, and we really appreciate you um, speaking up. And uh, I, we, I don't think you're going to see a five hundred dollar decrease in your taxes. Oh, I'm not talking about this year, next year. Next, following year? Yeah, we, yeah. we, uh, I think we're pretty, um, we've been, I've been on this board a long time and we had, uh, we had a lot of years where we had 0%. One year we had a one and a half percent decrease. I wouldn't say that's the wise thing to do in retrospect because then we had to play catch up for a couple of years, but we got by. Yeah, I I hear you. Well, one thing I could add, I guess, if I can, Mr. Chair, yeah, is if you know, one thing that I guess I've had to do is sell land. Didn't want to, but I looked at land as an investment and a holding. Just like when they when they talk about having reserves, you talked about the school that has a cash reserve sitting there. The state will tell us we should have a cash reserve. Um, I guess I look at. A cash is an investment, stocks is an investment, social security is your income, you earned it, that's yours, an investment, silver, gold, collector cars, whatever, is an investment. Just so everybody's aware, our county sits with, valued at over $23 million, but it is a holding of 38,000 acres of tax forfeited land. I, just, I didn't see that in this, really this information, but just want to make sure everybody's also aware of that. But I shouldn't have to stole the land just to pay the taxes. I just like yeah, I mean, suggesting that. I just like to use the microphone to say I don't think there's anyone here who would disagree. If you can show us any company or any person who will pay what you guys are proposing, we'd all sell. Mm -hmm. Every last one of us, and then you guys won't have any voters to tax. And at thirty eight thousand acres of land, that's only valued at twenty three million, but we're sitting on that land here. And if I, I've heard people say to, you know, that was a recommendation to me, we'll sell some of your land, pay your taxes. Well, part, part, yeah. part of, well, no, I, I understand that, but. They, they sell what they're holding out. Yeah, part, they're part of the problem. Sitting right on a now. lot of money here at this, this table, this building holds a lot of land that is not bringing in money to this county. So logically, if you have two pieces of land, right? Two people paid all the taxes. You take this land away, this person, this person has to pay it all. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make. It's just much bigger. We, 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 we do, we do. Uh, if you if you remember back in the budget presentation, I do have to point out one thing that we do a, a make a pretty good substantial amount of money selling timber, har harvested. Timber, timber rights off of the county land. Uh, this last year, we sold uh, $330,000 worth of timber off of 300 acres. And, and then we, you know, it would be in probably 45 years before we cut it again. But it is a, it is a cash for us and a, it's a recreation for us. And 
for everybody. Our PILT money is right on here too, Mr. Chair. That's the payment and move taxes from the state and the feds. Yeah. That's like a, almost a million, I think. And right now there's a there's a, a federal lawsuit that we're you know, everybody in the state is trying to figure out how we're going to weave through that and somebody above our pay grade is going to figure out how it, how it shakes out in the end. But we we can't sell that land and keep any money ourselves right now anyway because until that lawsuit is settled. No, the lawsuit was a Supreme Court ruling that Tyler versus Hennepin County. It was unanimous decision. The Supreme Court ruled it as the Minnesota property tax scheme. And all I would say before I sell any of my land to pay my debt, I'm going to log it first before I let it go back, forfeited. It's kind of a shame that somebody loses their land for a few thousand dollars. And then the government logs it off for a few hundred thousand dollars. Tyler versus Hennepin County. It's a pretty good read. Anybody got anything else? I just want to add uh, that we've sat in meetings yeah. with some of our township officials and they, they've come here to talk to us. Ask us not to sell their forfeited land, which we sold the forfeited land at that time. Um, but they have asked us to keep it so that their grandchildren and their great grandchildren and their great great grandchildren will always have someplace wild to go where they can enjoy. So there's there's both sides that all of us are trying to deal with. We've got JJ's side where um, we should sell everything, and we've got this other side that's saying don't sell anything. We want to have it for our families to enjoy or for people to be able to hunt. So trying to take all of that and figure out what is the best case scenario. So we do have some memorial forests and some land that people can utilize. And um... Well, thank you, Terry. Mm -hmm. And then we're all aware of, of uh, what Chenguatana State Forest, Banning State Park, General Andrews Forest. What's another big one, Namadji? Um, None of that is the tax forfeited. No, that's all the public land she's speaking about that people can it go It was all tax forfeited. Where, what is that? What is it being used for? Can we go out there? I think Terry just yeah, tried yeah. elaborating. You can. can. There's that for one Bob. Yeah, look at it. Show me a map. Yeah, you get a cup. I'm tech challenged. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll it, but it we got enough in the tech budget here for you. That, that's not a problem. I, yeah. I do, do that. I do have a question. I'll get you a. Plans. I'll get you a plat book and you yeah. can look it up. No, but she, she she made a good point of you know land to be used land to be used for for the public, but it's just how much is it, how much is enough? You know how many times do you pay to change your oil? It's it's a duplication of services. Our tax dollars always already pay for all these state forests. I have a question. Yeah, can you stand up to the? <laughs> Talking about raising taxes, but what we haven't talked about and what I, I'm kind of looking at is, and I've been here to talk to you guys before about the library appropriations, and I do believe that it's mandated at 200 and some odd, and yet we give 371. Thousand. I can take that one. Yeah. Um, um, I'm, on, I'm on that board. And okay. so you're right, $200,000 or in that ballpark was stipulated by statute 20 years ago that we needed to pay. So in 20 years, your cost of livings have gone up, your... Um, inflation has gone up and what the libraries have to pay has increased substantially and so what they did was they figured out by our usage by our tax capacity and there was one other thing um population population thank you um, our population though has been going down from what i have yep. found pretty, uh, like pretty our, stable it might have gone down a thousand people, right? <laughs> yeah but it's going down so that does that does not justify in my head in my heart maybe you guys as well hundred thousand dollars more than what we're mandated to pay especially considering the trash that they have in our library. let me finish please especially considering the trash that they have in our libraries that is there for the children it's groomers are using that to traffic her children and i talked to you before about the fact that my son was sexually assaulted Okay, so it's a real personal thing to me. Get that trash out of our libraries at least put it in the adult section Cut it down to the bare minimum. It would lower our taxes. Real simple. Other thing is the <clears throat> salaries that are being raised. Have you increased any services? I don't think so. But you're adding staff and giving raises and raising our taxes for it. 
doesn't sound real good to me. I'm sorry. There's, there's mention of the state mandate is a certain amount of money and they do want an increase. And then uh, Terry, like she said, she could answer this. Um, the state gave out of the, the budget surplus 200,000 more already to the library. So I guess I'm just hopeful when we have to make a decision here on what we're going to get the library, at least that amount, we don't have to give them because we already gave all that money in tax dollars to St. Paul. Then we give tax dollars to it from Pine County. So to me, that's just simple math there. That's First, a, yeah, that's low hanging fruit right out. there. Some of that trash, either out or someplace where our kids can't get it. Mm -hmm. I'd cut it to the bare minimum. But the library was already given money by the state, right, Terry? From the budget surplus? Yes. I think in our... Yes. I just think if that needs so to be extra. in our conversation. If we choose to not pay them the minimum that they stated, which is this amount here that we will be paying them, not the, not the money that was set 20 years ago, but this, this amount of money, we will be closing libraries. And so then it's whose library do we close? Because they can't... If we don't pay for that library to be open, we're going to lose one. So if, have, do any of you guys live up by Sandstone? Yeah. Their library is phenomenal. Have you go in there and see it? It's absolutely beautiful. Um, Pine City, I look at the programs that they have at the libraries and the people that utilize them. Um, I can't, I could never figure out what we would close because people use those libraries and, and they like the libraries and this is what we need to pay to keep those libraries open. I understand about the book. Yeah. And you, you know that we went and we said that we wanted that book moved, but our hands are tied because of the right to speech. Yeah. Because people have a right to say what they want. There's the, what is it? Which amendment? The freedom of speech. <laughs> first. first Amendment, thank freedom you. The First Amendment where they have freedom of speech. And abuse of children. I understand. And that was, this was argued to the max, to the max. And we, yeah, we were told. So we need to start protesting. No, it's real lucky. But we're not going to. We're not going to solve that debate here. But that's why. That's any why other, any other uh, comments on the budget? One thing: with yeah. the huge surplus of money that we have, state of Minnesota. Yeah. Does any of that come back to you guys? Because obviously it was from all of us paying our taxes and supplying. I mean, there's a huge surplus in the state of Minnesota. It's all, all of us non that aren't I think Dave, Dave could probably answer it, couldn't you? We did, we did uh, get more money. We got enough money. Um, our probation department for years, as and we have argued with them, the state legislators, that the reimbursement rate that they gave us, there was a, there was a deal. It's kind of a neat story. It was made in 1996 that the state would pay 55% of every probation officer's salary. Then the, then budget hard times came, and so they started prorating it, but they never went back and fixed it. So before this coming year, they were down to 23% that they were paying us. And so we've got that back up to, I believe, uh, yeah. How much, Matt? Well, almost to the full, almost full. Almost full. Not full, but the, so that, the ratio to 50%. That's why we added a probation agent back into our budget because we, we've got the money there. So so some of it does come back. Some of it does come yeah. back. Yeah. And yeah. Mr. Chair, if, yeah. if I could add, there was an increase in county program aid and there was a one-time increase in public safety aid. So that stuff the, the sheriff is doing with new weapons and fixing up the range, those are dollars that came from the surplus. It was small compared to the yeah. 17 billion they had or whatever. Yeah. We had high hopes they were used. Obviously that surplus is from us taxpayers, That's you taxpayers, paying, you know, your your yeah. parents there. But it's like, okay, now there's 17 billion or you know, whatever the amount is. So with a B. Yeah. A billion. What where I mean they just announced 2.7 2.4 or whatever yeah okay thank you guys anybody else thank you we will thank you all for coming we'll declare the meeting adjourned